Let us study another way of graphical representation of data and it is called the use of a histogram. Okay, our learning objective in the study of histogram is threefold. One is that we want to understand what is a histogram and when to use it. Second is what is grouping and how is it relevant to the construction of a histogram and third is of course to construct a histogram, right? And we are going to learn on all three of those using this data set. This is the data collected from a class of 30 students and we have recorded their height in centimeter. Okay, so this is our variable in study. All right. And the objective is to, of course, to study the distribution of height of those 30 students in this class, right? Now, you will observe that this variable that we have defined, the height, it is a continuous variable in nature because height can go from 155 to 155.5 centimeter or 161.2 centimeter, right? It all depends on the precision and accuracy of your measuring instrument, right? That is why we say that this data that you are trying to study is of continuous in nature. And whenever you observe a data set depicting a variable which is continuous in nature, and that is when we use a histogram. It is different than a bar chart, even though they might look the same. A histogram is used when you have a continuous variable under study. A bar chart is used when you have a categorical variable in study, right? Now, why grouping is relevant in histogram is that, take a look at this data set. We have 30 observations, the lowest being from 155 centimeter and the highest being 185, right? If you were to analyze all those 30 observations as a data element by itself, it will not give you any meaningful information. Rather, what we do is, we divide those 30 observations into smaller chunks and each smaller chunk is called a group of data. That way you can create a frequency plot that how the heights have been distributed. And that is exactly we say that grouping is very relevant in the construction of a histogram. So with that, we say that there are three critical elements in the construction of a histogram. One is defining your class interval. Second is grouping or dividing your data into those intervals. And third is, of course, constructing your plot, right? Constructing the plot. So the very first part, defining your interval. When I look at my data, I see that there is a range. The range goes from all the way from 155 to 185 centimeter, right? This is my range. So the way I'm going to create intervals is that we will take this range and we will divide that into equal number of parts. If I divide 30 with five, I get a range of six centimeter each, right? Or I can divide 30 with six, I can get a range of five centimeter each. What that means is that either I can take five groups having a range of six centimeter each, or I can take six groups of five centimeter each. We can pick either one of those. But in this exercise, I'm going to pick five groups having a range of six centimeter each, okay? So then I'm going to make use of a number line in which I show that this is my entire range, okay? And this range begins from 155 and goes all the way up to 185, okay? Now this has to be divided into five equal groups of six centimeter, right? So let's mark our five intervals here. This is one, two, three, four, and five. So first interval goes from 155 261 the next will be from 161 to 167 next will be up to 173 then it will be 179 and then finally 185 so here are my five intervals one two three four and five at this stage we are covered with our step one which is creating your intervals right Next, let us divide or group our data into those five intervals. So I already have a table divided into such groups, okay? And you notice that this is my interval one, that is from 155 to 161, just like what you show here on this number line, right? And when I have this interval, then I look or scan through this data set that how many observations are really falling within this interval, okay? So I find that there are three observations, hence, this is my number of students falling in my interval one. And this, the last column, it is called the frequency of those observations in that specific interval width, all right? So what you're really doing is, you're defining your interval and grouping those data sets by counting how many observations are falling in each interval, right? Just like that, we will count how many observations are in each interval and that gives you a frequency distribution. Okay, 
So at this stage, you are done with your second part, which is basically grouping the data into those intervals. Okay. So at this stage, what we are going to do is we are going to now create a vertical axis and this vertical axis also known as Y axis in this case, this will become your axis for showing the frequency on the vertical scale. Okay. So you have now two axes. X axis shows the class intervals and the Y axis shows the frequency. Okay. So let's quickly define the scale on the Y axis. So let's say this is my point eight, this is zero and this is four. Okay. This is two and then this would be six. Let's define one more division. It is three and then it is five and then it's seven. Okay. Now we have defined scales on both axes, the vertical as well as the horizontal. So finally, we are at the last step in which we are simply going to create the bars for each interval and the height of each bar will be equal to their frequency of that specific interval. So, and the second interval goes from 161 to 167 and there are eight students. So that's my frequency, which is the number of students. Third interval that goes from 167 to 173 and there are four students, right? Likewise, the fourth interval will be of seven students. And finally, the last, which is of eight student. Okay. Now you're done constructing your bars, which is the width of each bar is equal to the width of each interval and height of each bar is equal to the number of students in that specific interval, right? So this is three, eight, four, seven, and eight again. So this is our histogram in which your class intervals are shown on the X axis and your frequencies are shown on the Y axis. Okay. A histogram is to be used when you have a variable under study that is of continuous nature. And that is why if you notice that these bars that they're touching each other, that means the variable under study is of continuous in nature, right? It goes all the way from 155 to 185. Okay. So this is our learning on the histogram. We have covered basically what is a histogram, when to use it, and also why is grouping relevant in a histogram. And most importantly, we have learned how to construct a histogram.